Right, so the sun is going in and out, so the lighting is really not ideal. I don't even know what the sun's doing today. I think it's just deciding to be, just be weird. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, my name's Io. I am a final year, I'm not even a final year student. I am a recent graduate from the University of Warwick. Oh, the lighting's getting worse, I'm sorry. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Warwick. I studied English literature. And also this year, I secured a training contract, which is basically like a job at a Magic Circle law firm in London. After going through the whole application process and going through the stress of this whole mess of trying to get into the world of commercial law through vacation schemes and training contracts, I thought that I would share some tips with you guys today just to hopefully help some of you if you're struggling with the process and also just provide maybe a sounding board on what to do and like maybe also what you shouldn't be doing in applications. Obviously there are so many different types of videos out there which have covered stuff like this and I would recommend you watch all of them but I think it's important to get different perspectives. There's no two ways to go about the process and I'm even just grateful I'm in this position where I'd have to do these applications ever again because they were genuinely traumatic. I've got my notes up on my Mac so if you see me looking back and forth between the camera and the side you know why but yeah I think I'm going to just jump straight into it but before I start I just want to say if you like the video definitely give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below and follow my Instagram at iLotVlogs to keep up to date with everything that I do in the week. Let's go. So firstly guys, I think it's so important to just trust yourself and trust the process. It is a very, very difficult process to go through and it can easily lead to you feeling like you need to compare yourself to other people or thinking that other people have it all sorted out. Please don't, not in a way to compare, but I know people that had everything sorted out theoretically because they had all the first year schemes and they struggled later on to get like a vacation scheme or training contract. I know people who who struggled to get first year schemes and then found it really easy to get a vacation scheme or training contract. The whole process is so unique to everyone. So you can never compare thinking that this is what it is or this is the you know surefire way to get a job and that these people are ahead of you or not or that you're not good enough. If you're trying to be a lawyer and you're working hard, you are definitely good enough. That is enough. That's basically the main takeaway that you need to remember from today. So firstly, just don't compare. My next tip, and I know everyone says this, is to start early in the application season and to start early, if possible, in your university career. Now, I know that's not always possible for everyone. People have different commitments in summer or some people may not even know about the whole process of applying for like vacations, even training contracts early on in university. But the sooner you can get started with it, the, honestly, the better. I'm filming this video in August, so hopefully when this gets released, it'll be in August. But if you're watching now, applications for some firms, especially some of the top Magic Circle law firms, which a lot of people desire to be at, have opened in August. Beyond no illusion that people are probably submitting applications or drafting things as we speak now. And that's not to put pressure on people, but that's just to just show the fast paced nature of the process and you want to basically be the earliest to write your application because it means that you're going to be the first person they really look at loads of firms recruit on a rolling basis which essentially means that the first people to submit the applications are the first people that get seen and they fill up those spaces sometimes before looking at other applications and for the firms that don't recruit on a rolling basis i'm somewhat skeptical about it because frankly if you just have submitted your application earlier i do think like somewhat digitally maybe you'll be at the top of the pile and also you probably looked a bit more favorably on because you're diligent enough to get your application done on time which again is a key skill of being a lawyer being efficient and being able to meet deadlines um, at quite a fast pace so definitely submit your applications early if you're starting university definitely look at first year schemes just open days just immerse yourself as much as possible so that when it comes to the time of applying you have things to talk about have a spreadsheet guys all the firms you want to apply to and all of their dates and more importantly prioritize the firms you want to apply to i think last year when i was applying for training contracts vacation schemes i had like a list of 15 firms but i also made sure i listed them in terms of the importance of the ones i wanted to apply for because it is about quality over quantity and if I'm being perfectly honest there were a few firms which I probably had on my list which I actually didn't really want to get a job at as much as the other firms so I would rather have put in more energy in firms at the earlier part of my application process that I definitely wanted to get a job at than leaving those firms till the end and putting myself at a disadvantage because A, I don't have enough time to actually write a good application and B, because also I've just left it too late. So just 
really focus on the firms that you want to apply to and prioritize those firms in a spreadsheet so you know when you need to hit those applications at what time. Prioritization is also really important because as sad as it sounds, you may not actually be able to apply to everything. Don't forget once you submit that application, you may have psychometric tests to be doing, first stage video interviews, proper interviews in person, assessment centers. So the process is so long that once you start actually submitting things, you start realizing that there's actually more to do for a firm than just submitting the application, which is why like, you should also consider how many firms you're applying to, which leads me to my next point, and also narrow that down. Consider how many firms you're applying to, guys. You want to do as many high quality applications as possible. For me, I think that was roughly eight to 10. For other people, it could be more. You may be coming from a position where you feel like you need to do more applications, and that's fair enough, but I would also recommend that you really prioritize the quality because this is an application for a future career. This application you do could essentially be the career for the rest of your life. A lot of firms have very high retention rates, so it's not like just doing a university application where you can just quickly write a few things. You're going to be scrutinized as if is this person someone worth investing in. I think on average, it's roughly around 275K per trainee that a firm spends as an investment in that trainee. So your application has to at least reflect 275K at a minimum, hopefully more to show that you're worth giving a training contract to or a vacation scheme to. This is probably the most important tip which I think a lot of people completely forget about, but it's so important to think about whether you're the right fit for a firm. And I think fit and culture is so underrepresented in law because a lot of law firms want to just present that they're all the same or pretend that they all have a very similar ethos. But frankly, law firms are almost as different as university cultures and where you actually end up as a trainee lawyer will change your experience massively. I think certain firms do have a certain fit and there is a certain type of characteristic. Even if you're just going down to personality traits, you have to look at the words that certain firms describe themselves as, you know, sometimes collegiate will be one of them. Some of it will be like, you know, high achieving excellence and I think that's the subtext which you really need to read and think to yourself are you the right fit for that firm because a lot of time people will look for the firms that they really want to apply to but they don't actually consider whether the firms would actually want to have them as a trainee and I'm not saying you should limit yourself or limit your choices at all but if you don't think about whether you're the right fit for a firm you are preparing to be potentially disappointed down the line when they don't pick you to go to further rounds don't overload yourself this whole application process is going to be a part of your life for, I hate to say it, probably at a minimum three to four months. And at a maximum, for some people, it can be years before they secure a vacation or training contract. So it's really important to incorporate this as part of your lifestyle, not think that this is the be all and end all, not literally live and die by writing applications or doing psychometric tests or interviews because it will just burn you out. Another underrated tip, which I think also saved my applications in third year, is that it's so important to actually experiment with the different types of application styles. So just to do a brief summary, in law, application forms are actually quite different. Some application forms will ask you to answer questions. Some application forms will ask for a CV and cover letter. Other application forms will ask for... What were they asked for? Some application forms asked for a personal statement, which I think is a bit much, not gonna lie. I wasn't trying to do UCAS all over again. Yeah, some will ask for a personal statement as well. And while I think this is actually super difficult and quite unfair because it means that you have to change your style a lot for different firms, it can actually be used to a lot of people's benefit. So I realized around kind of second to third year, that transition probably around this time last year, that I actually thrive a lot more on applications that were more like prosaic and more free flowing text because I mean, I was an English student, so I'm, I'm more used to actually answering essays and having more time and space to actually explain things. And they just suited my style of working and writing a lot better. Whereas I know people that maybe come from a law background or maybe a more scientific background that just really love application questions because they're really succinct and to the point. And I appreciate that there are a lot of application forms that you don't really have much of a choice, but if there's a firm which has quite a unique application structure, definitely see if you can prioritize that in your applications because that could actually be what you need to actually get yourself through the door to an interview. 
and a lot of people I know have thrived on doing application forms which are cover letters or personal statements over questions and vice versa so definitely think about the application forms that you're submitting and the style of them and see if you can prioritize ones that suit your style more another tip is that it's super important to keep abreast of online platforms and YouTube I will caveat this do not do it in a way where you obsessively start to like essentially stalk a forum page and keep on keep on looking at like what the updates are and whether people have got interviews or jobs. I mean, why would anyone do that? Like, I would never do that. Don't do that because it can really get in your head and it can start making you just feel like really bad. But I do think that a lot of online platforms can be super useful. Like this one. So obviously if you like the content, stick around, hit the subscribe button. I think it's just super important to make sure that you're following a lot of people who are at a similar stage of their legal journey to you because A, it can be quite motivational and B, a lot of people that are at the same stage as you are the people that actually know the process a lot better than people that have done it 10 years ago. So definitely follow YouTubers, online platforms, Instagram pages, and just stay abreast of everything that's going on from those platforms. So those are more general tips. I'm gonna to go to some more specific tips in terms of writing. So firstly, my key tip in terms of writing is don't research hard, research smart. And I think this is so crucial. A lot of people will be like, you need to know everything about the firm. It has to be super specific. And those things are true to an extent but you can kind of game the system and there's only a certain number of words you can really write in an application form, which means that even if you were meant to know everything about a firm, there's only so much about a firm you can really talk about. So all you need to do is actually figure out specific things that a firm's going to want to see in the application form and you'll probably get through that door. In a lot of my application forms, I got into a habit of knowing especially if it was a longer form. I'm gonna speak about a practice area I really like. I'm gonna speak about a specific cultural element to the firm, talk about probably the high level work they do, and also talk about a unique feature such as uh, a specialism in a practice area or a specific way of how the business is organized. And once you've done those four or five things, basically, you're onto kind of having quite a specific application form in itself. It doesn't need to be over -labored. You don't need to research to the nth degree like reading copious amounts of reports because that is just inefficient research and you're wasting your time and you're just making yourself more tired. Research smart and figure out what you actually need to put in the form. Don't just research everything about a law firm. This is also another thing which saved me a lot in my applications in my final year of university. But for every firm which asks you why this firm or why do you want to apply to our firm, there has to be different reasons for different law firms. I was so naive when I was doing applications to begin with and I'd just be like, I want to work at your firm because it's a global law firm. I mean, literally nearly every law firm is a global law firm. And obviously there are a lot of regional and national firms. It'd be really bad if you say you want to work at a global law firm and it's a national law firm because that's just not correct and not right. But if you're applying to a global law firm and the only reason you want to apply to your firm is because it's a global law firm, they'll literally just look at your form and tell you like, go somewhere else because most other firms will offer you what you want to do. You have to make it way more specific. It has to be reasons because of a specific training contract seat or the number of training contract seats you get to do or the approach in terms of the specialisms you can, you know, practice in. But if your research isn't specific enough to the extent that the firm knows you're talking directly about them, it's just not specific enough. I think the general rule of thumb is that if you can replace on your application form the name of the firm you're applying to with another law firm and it still makes sense, your application is not specific enough. It has to be so specific that if you were to put another law firm's name in where you're applying to, on your application form, it wouldn't make sense, it would look illogical. You should be able to read your application form and actually know the firm someone's applying to without actually seeing the name of the firm on the application form because it's that specific and that's the level of research you have to do, which is quite a hard skill to get, I understand, it has to be that nuanced and that specific. Also, in terms of writing, guys, get sample answers. Simple, just see if you can find from your friends, I know it's hard to find sometimes, but Corporate Law Academy, someone who just has some sample answers because that'll give you a guide as to what is successful and what isn't successful in an application form. And having that is a really good way to just get into your mindset 
what you need to start writing about to get those vacation schemes and training contracts. Another thing in terms of writing is that if the firm lists competencies on their website, say they want people that are driven, have integrity, you kind of want to reflect that in your application form because that shows that you're the right fit for a law firm. So when I was talking about fit earlier, a good way to demonstrate the right fit for a law firm is essentially presenting the skills and attributes that they want in your application and basically making that match up to what they say they want in the website because then it's just like a like a perfect like perfect match like you can't break that if you're just saying stuff which is really good but not actually what they're looking for then it doesn't look like you may be quite the right fit for a law firm and hence another reason why you may be rejected with writing please don't impersonate don't try to be someone else loads of people want to try and be this model un international high-flying overachiever and a lot of people are like that but if you're not like that you don't need to feel like you need to be like that because you're just conforming to like this general view of what a commercial lawyer would be a lot of the time commercial law firms are looking for a lot, a lot of unique qualities which you have which other people won't have so try to make yourself a bit more unique and allow yourself to talk about experiences you've had which may actually be different from other people's experiences a bit of a controversial one but it comes down to prioritization if there's a law firm which you really want to apply to and you don't know how to really structure your answer but there's another law firm which you don't mind applying to but it's not it's not maybe your favorite favorite firm obviously try equally as hard for both firms but you can sometimes use the firm which you maybe care slightly less about as a practice for the firm you do care more about because sometimes you just need that bit of a real experience to gauge how to write uh i'll leave that point like that but I sometimes think that it's important to use the application process in itself as an iterative process and improve upon your applications by applying to other law firms. Structure guys is so important. It's so important to like have your application structured in such a way which is easy to read and break it down so that you're addressing each part of the question and link it back to the question. Almost like the way you do a peel paragraph in school, P-E-E-L. Sometimes you kind of need to do that for applications as well. But different questions require different structures. In terms of timing and making sure like you're doing it in an efficient amount of time, I definitely would recommend banging out a first draft just so you don't lose momentum. And then after re-editing it later on in the week, I feel like some people can either write an application too fast and then it's too rushed, or some people end up doing something where they like write an application over like a month and that's just too slow because you're not going to be able to keep up with the pace of the application process if you're writing like one application per month so really try to keep up the momentum and not slow down too much so penultimate tip guys specificity is key and that means getting your spelling punctuation grammar correct people always say oh it's so easy i don't need to worry about that but like when you're applying to a law firm is it and with an and is it and with an ampersand as in the is it stevenson harwood with the ph or is it stevenson harwood with the v if you don't know those things then get to know and just figure it out quickly because that is one of the quickest ways you can just get rejected from application not having the specificity required that they want essentially for you to be a lawyer throughout this whole process you're essentially trying to demonstrate that you're good enough to be a commercial lawyer and if you can't get things like you know specifics of the law firm's name right then you just will get rejected and it's as simple as that another example of that is calling practice areas by their name if it's called transportation at one law firm then it's called logistics at another law firm make sure you call it this specific practice area that it's called at the law firm don't just call it a general name and lastly in terms of writing look for and write on specific practices and practice areas and that way you can make sure that you're standing out and making sure that your application is specific enough. So guys, those are all my tips for today. I know this video is actually super long and probably longer than the videos I normally make, but I just wanted to make sure this video was just jam-packed and full of information as possible. Hopefully that helped you guys do applications. Good luck. As I'm going to law school in September, I'm hoping to do way more law content in terms of applications and also some law vlogs. So if you like the video, definitely stick around and subscribe. I'm hoping this helped. And if you have any further questions, definitely leave comments down below. It'd be nice if we can get like a little thread going on where we can help each other out. But yeah, best of luck with applications, guys. You've got this. Keep on going and keep on working hard. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye.